कृपया ध्यान दीजिए द लैंग्वेज यूज ऑन द पॉडकास्ट मे नॉट बी फिट फॉर कंजम्पन वी वॉन्ट यू ट्रेड केयरफुली बट लिसन यार डोंट बी सो कंजर्वेटिव When I was a young lad, which quite frankly would be up to last weekend, I remember the one thing that I kept telling people, and I'm talking about when I was about eight, ten, twelve, maybe not more than that, uh, is that I wanted to be a writer. And I remember most of the mothers in the class, or the other kids, were very happy with that because there was nobody else who wanted to be a writer. They all had dreams of uh, strange dreams, but uh, some were good, some were odd. But mine was uh, something that everybody was like, "Yeah, everybody likes a writer or an aspiring writer." So today we've got the top, the pinnacle, the big gun. The alpha, the one and only, and who doesn't know? And who, if you've lived in India and beyond, of course. But if you've lived in India and you speak the English language, this is the name. But there's no way this name will not have touched you in some way or form uh, by the time you were in your third or fourth standard and beyond that as well. Ladies and gentlemen, the legendary Ruskin Bond is with us. We welcome him. I will play uh, High Fitz because he's mentioned Menuhin, <laughs> and as a lover of uh, the violin myself, I will go above Menuhin and play him High Fitz himself. Uh, but here it is: Songs of the Forest. There you go. Sorry, Song of the Forest. Get that right, very much. Ruskin Bond. I'm sure you get this all the time. Wherever you go, people must be touching your feet and watching the ground uh, ahead of you. And I mean, they must be driving you nuts after some time. But I've uh, got to tell you, honestly, not too many people. Uh, not to say that I'm in any shape or form a famous person, but not too many people in- excite me or intimidate me. Uh, but you know, you're Ruskin Bond. I-, I can't believe it. Growing up, I can't believe I actually get to meet Ruskin Bond. Well, I'm the sort of person who gets in- intimidated very quickly. Basically, a, a shy character. Uh, um and if anybody comes to tries to touch my feet i flee it be i find it very embarrassing <laughs> so I, 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 but it's great to see you and um i've always wanted to 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 see you and to know if you if you really are uh, if you're a real person <laughs> and, <laughs> and there you, you are like my wife uh, now <laughs> <laughs> all the day you are in session blood So there you go. thank you it's nice to be with you. Mm. Uh but yeah. let me before before we kick off uh, I try to make some notes because there's little I don't think we have enough time for for this book but I was, and I just spoke to somebody uh, somebody from my from my own past in the sense to be grow up together and because you know when you think Ruskin Bond immediately or there's so much attached to that it's like it opens up like a, a treasure trove of memories and everything else because you know you go back to school college for and yeah. this is not just me this is the story of a lot of people mm. in, in this country. I just we've forgotten because I haven't read you for a long time this how and part for praising you on your face how beautiful and simple your storytelling style is and how profound it is at the same time and i mean it was such a quick read i had i at 2 o'clock spal shu uh, runs this program now we have a problem with producers they drop like flies uh, maybe covid maybe something else and um he at uh, 2 o'clock message me have you read the book etc and i had mm-hmm. that's 2 o'clock and in 2 hours i basically run to the book and I, it was a really Wonderful. really great yeah. read yeah you read it was like being a kid again <laughs> No, I, 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 I can't do that anymore. I, I feel like I was transported to thirteen or fourteen when I was voracious, and I could read a book a day. You know, and I mean, it would just fly. Yes, so yes, yeah, sir. let me get that out of the uh, way I, and just tell you. I still read uh, two or three books a week. I'm a great reader. I have to confess, I think I'm a reader first and a writer second because all my life, well, if if say I write for an hour in the morning, I'll spend at least two hours with a book later on. Uh, I'm really a a reader and uh, it goes back to to my school days and it was and it, yes it was because i was a bookworm and a lover of books that i wanted to write to and to emulate <clears throat> my favorite writers not write like them but to be like them and um, so there it is 70 years ago it's been a long a long long literary journey but a good one uh, and and it's had its ups and downs and it's i've had my failures and a few successes and uh, Yeah I am still doing it <laughs> but you know in a sense uh, Ruskin can I call you Ruskin by the way please, uh, please, I, I I'm now 50 years old I can't say uncle and Mr Bond sir <laughs> and G and all that I mean that's just uh, so um, oh, by the end of the show I'm sure I'll be saying Russ <laughs> it'll be too much <laughs> Russ is uh, all right <laughs> no, I shall. I shall uh, pay the adequate respect because you surely deserve it. No, I, I, I was just saying that uh, the one thing I noticed, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that I think from the beginning, although it's not really part of the book, but it's there towards the end when you're reading it. Uh, you were always going to be a writer. I think at 16 or something, you sort of know that there is no other uh, mention of anything else, as far as I can yeah, see. Yeah, you're right. Um, it was the one thing I was good at, apart from football, and uh, I did want to be a football player. But at least wow. now in my 80s, I'm still. 
writing stories, whereas kicking a football about isn't... I mean, I did try, you know, not too long ago. Some kids were playing football down the road, and the ball came bouncing towards me, and I gave it a mighty kick. The ball flew away, but I was hopping about in agony because I'd forgotten <laughs> I had gout in my left foot. <laughs> so it took wow. me a day or two to recover. <laughs> so football was out, and so was tap dancing. I wanted to be a tap dancer at one time, you know, like Gene Kelly or Fred Astaire. Uh, but I just I lost of my I lost the figure very early, you know. <laughs> I didn't have the figure for it. <laughs> you know, so, so, you mentioned it. Uh, tap dancing was it's phenomenal. I haven't yeah. again. I haven't seen that for a long time. But as a younger man, I also tried my hand watching yeah, as the aforementioned Fred Astaire, Gene Kelly. Forties, uh, you know that time and. Uh, a lot of, um, but it's much tougher, uh, Ruskin, than people think because when you see it, it doesn't appear to be that much going on except for no, uh, foot movement. Yes, right. But if you try to do it, it's quite athletic, isn't it? Yes, it is. Um, it is, <laughs> and it's, and it's very of, fast. It's you don't see it now. It's sort of gone out of fashion. Hmm? Yeah, uh, but you know, I'm sure it'll come back in some shape or form because it's it's it, a highly it, yeah, uh, it could it's, it's cardio worthy it. exercise. Also, I'm sure for people. <laughs> so, but yeah, and I'm not a great one for exercise, but but uh, tap dancing would have been one and, way of and, doing it. And may I apologize to the listeners for discussing cardio and exercises with Ruskin Bond instead <laughs> of the book, which is why we're here. Song of the Forest. I suppose if people know only a little about you, they'll always think of you and the hills. You and Masuri, I think we all know that without really knowing enough about you, we'll know that it's there, a footnote which will be there yes. in your head. So, I, yeah. yeah, I've been here so long, I guess that's it. I've just become part of the mountain, you know, uh, like an old, an old tree, sort of, um, sort of leaning over the hillside and watching the world go by. Old trees, <laughs> uh, they're the best, Mr. Bond, yes. the very best. Uh, but uh, you know, some I think when you're in England at some point, uh, I don't know, it's because of the girl uh, going back to Vietnam or what exactly. You seem to pine uh, for India at that point as well. So yes. can I... Uh, yes, I mean, uh, yeah, uh, that's true. After, after finishing school, when my mother sh shipped me off to England and to relatives, uh, my I've... I felt very homesick, you know, and but it was out of that homesick that I wrote my first novel, hmm, um, which was set in my last year in India. And and when I found a publisher after rewriting it two or three times, it wasn't easy. Um, they, they, in those days, they gave you a small advance, not a small advance, a standard advance of 50 pounds. Huh? And that was enough to bring me back to India. Forty pounds was the by the Polish ship, uh, yeah. Was the ship, yeah. Those uh, those old steamers, hmm? and uh, you had that Indian touch in you. You looked for the cheapest option, which I immediately said, "Okay, <laughs> these Indian, <laughs> that's good enough for me." Yeah, <laughs> yes, the yeah. Polish ship. Yeah, it. I remember it was it was considered an unlucky ship, and things did happen. Somebody fell overboard. One, one in person the night, fell overboard. Yeah, and they, and they never found him. Uh, and and then when we we got to Bombay. Um, Mumbai now, it was, um, the, the ship caught fire and there were fire engines coming in from all directions. I got off well in time though. <laughs> and they stole your, hey, there's one thing we have in common. They took your stuff, uh, the mm -hmm. customs guys. They took all your perfumes or your, well, what was it? Yeah, they did. Yes, they weren't very sympathetic. Uh, and they weren't expensive perfumes. I'd bought them in Gibraltar. Gibraltar then was, actually all the shops were Indian owned. And they were, these these perfumes were locally made. They weren't very good actually. So, so I don't think it helped him very much with his girlfriend, even if he did use it that evening. <laughs> Sort of karma bouncing around. Yes. Uh, can I, I? I want to go in order as much as we can with as much time. I've made a few notes, but I just want to go, since we've mentioned the Vietnamese girl and since you were it's, you're uh, talking about it openly. Mm -hmm. No, I, I didn't understand why she uh, ran away because of the communist uh, regime. Oh, I mean, what, right what was no, her deal she with? Away. She had her her parents living in what was Viet Viet Minh in the uh, communist part of of Vietnam then. Right. Mm -hmm. And the war, was, there was a civil war going on. Right. Uh, or about to break out, I think. And uh, so she finally had to go home because she was having, I think, so I was told, some, uh, you know, difficulties staying on in England. Mm -hmm. And so she went back to um, what was Vietnam. Hanoi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not Saigon, wow. but Hanoi, which was in the uh, uh, communist-controlled part of. So it could be like a casualty of war, uh, not to be. Yes, I, 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 I
Yeah. So in perspective, you can say, okay, fair enough. You know, I mean, that's the whole country being torn apart. And so, you know, yeah. and this was yeah, look, just... Look at what's happening today. Even countries yeah. are always being torn apart. It doesn't seem to end. Yeah. <laughs> we will reserve the right to speak about this country. You're safe in your hills. But we have yes. my hills, Malba Hills, not so safe. Um, <laughs> all right, let's, let's go into the book. Firstly, um, and my God, how prolific you are. I think at some point when Abbas joins us, we should mention all the books you've written, all the short stories you've written. I think the forward all so for those listening, yeah. uh, I don't know if there's anyone more prolific in, in writing short stories and they're fantastic short stories. In fact, in this book, what I've picked up also, are there's so many moments you can sit and do them as anecdotes, you know, over a drink to uh, a campfire or something. I mean, and they're all in my head right now because I've just read them. So uh, let's go back to how you saved the deer. I found they're very interesting because uh, mm-hmm. you, you chose to... Yeah, so that was, de- oh, but you deny the leopard uh, meal in a sense. So I, you know... It, this cottage was right down in the... It's not where I'm staying now. I'm on top of the hill and there's no no forest close by. But when I first came up uh, to this hill station, I lived on the outskirts. It was right in, in the forest, this cottage. And you open the window and, um, well, you could step out into a tree, actually. It was so close, the trees. And um, yes, one night this... this um, Barking deer. Tucker, barking yeah. deer uh, ran into the compound in a panic and the storeroom downstairs was open and it took refuge in there. And then when we heard this, I had a companion with me, I had, when we heard this leopard giving out its grunting, sawing I sound. Use the know, word cough. Le- 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 yes, we, we went and shut the door of the storeroom and, to, uh, and locked the cocker in so the leopard couldn't get to it. So, and finally, in, in frustration, it went away. Uh, and next day we let it out, and it uh, hopefully it it was safe again. We uh, didn't see it after that. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I just brought it up because sometimes the conservationists talk about the fact that you don't interfere with the with the natural order of things in a sense. But I guess I mean you're a human yeah. being, and you hear an animal. And, you well, know, since the, the, yeah. the, the natural order of things had interfered with me by coming into the house, I felt that I also had a right to interfere. <laughs> good point. <laughs> The Mehman culture of our subcontinent comes into play then, and you're a good host. Um, I, I should have set it up in the beginning. So you, I, right at the top, you talk of uh, uh, the subtle sounds of the forest vis-a-vis the you know the obvious uh, elephant trumpet and tiger roar, yeah, etc. That we all know of. But you talk of much more interesting sounds, which perhaps our ears won't pick up. But yeah. yeah. Birds, insects, um, crickets, and especially now with the, the monsoon coming, you hear, hear this uh, tremendous orchestra, chorus of cicadas. They, they all start, they're not actually singing. You know, they do it with their legs. They rub their legs against their bodies, and it sounds like a violin. Like a violin. <laughs> I um, think that's the first and, pornographic I, line I've heard from Ruskin Bond. They do so it with I their think, legs. <laughs> when I was in that, uh, down in that cottage, and there was an old lady next to me who was a bit deaf, I said, she thought I was referring to the girls singing in the school up, up on the hill when I said, um, um, Mrs. Biggs, uh, uh, the singing is beautiful today, isn't it? And she said, yes, Mr. Bond, they do it with their legs, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, do they really? Uh, so it's cicada time now, actually. Although if my window's open, I'm hearing car horns all the time now because uh, I'm right on the road that takes the tourists up to the top of the mountain. Um so it, it and I think it's a reaction to the COVID epidemic. A lot of people are coming to hill stations and wanting to get away from the cities yeah. and towns. Uh, and uh, why do they live. feel COVID can't find them in the hills? COVID will find you in the hills. Leave Ruskin <laughs> Bond's hills alone. They seem to follow you everywhere, but uh, no, we've been lucky up here. Yeah. Not yeah, but in the same breath, you you went after our common enemy, uh, the pu- public works department. Those people <laughs> have been after our lives for all our lives, and I know you said it in, in a casual manner, but uh, they are, all our lives. Yeah, they unhoused you from your earlier dwelling and just built a road for the greater good of mankind, as they claim, and destroyed flora and fauna. And even this road where I am now, originally it was a footpath long ago, and then it got turned into a motor road. Yeah? Uh, so that's what happened somehow, you know, footpaths nowadays become get, I love getting your... wider <laughs> and take all kinds of traffic. That's true. It starts as a footpath and soon it's a town. But yeah. um, I love the, the the phrase you've used because we were talking in the same breath about predators and the leopard and the and, and the and the deer, etc. And then you say the greater predator. <laughs> and then you mentioned the public <laughs> works department. So I thought that was spot on, really. All right, let's plunge. 
Dr. Cosmos. So is he a fraud or not? You know, I, I get the feeling. Actually, that story and the character in it is based on a real person who made a name for himself up here about 15, 20 years ago only. Uh, and um, he, he attracted uh, huge numbers of people who were sick or had ailments or incurable diseases. And a lot of them swore by him. They got better and felt better. Uh, but then uh, he got sick for a chap after some time and uh, sort of dwindled Something away. goes to Delhi. He goes yeah, to so Delhi. Yeah. A sort of fictionalized uh, um, oh. person and, and those incidents. Hmm? So it was actually, there was really somebody like that. I've changed the name, of course. So uh, and was he a genuine doctor? or because He was a physicist, hmm? I, as, as far as I remember. Hmm. Wow. Yes, he spent some years in Germany and... Uh, it was very impressive, and he didn't seem to look like a fraud. He put it all down to some sort of solar energy, which he sort of absorbed and then transferred to the patient or the person who wasn't keeping well. I didn't ask for any treatment myself um, because I'm quite happy to bask in the sun without expecting any bene other benefits from it. But um, he was he had a, a lot of people did come. To him and uh, and he was swore that he was effect effective. The only thing is, I think after some time they reverted to their original problems or uh, diseases. So maybe the cure wasn't a very lasting one. Hmm? Might have been psychological, hmm, I guess. Oh, so a temporary sort of cure. But uh, okay, fair enough. Yeah. Mm. If you want to need uh, read more, or rather, if you read the book, you'll be able to find out more. We don't want to give away everything. When we have uh, Ruskin Bond himself here, we can't have him revealing every detail. So we'll just try and <laughs> skip through as much as we can. This is the most important, not important. I think this was. I was just telling somebody on the phone. This Sohan character. I mean, it's really it's a it's a it's a ten minute read in terms of time. The entire mm. thing is probably less than a chapter, uh, yeah. encompassing the Sohan uh, story. But people, if you're listening, you've got to just this story is. It's really scary and it came out of nowhere because suddenly we went from another sort of passive, interesting, uh, well-described mm. sort of anecdote and then suddenly it went into this and then you're, you're waiting to see and, and there are lots of, there's a bit of twist and turns. It's a whodunit almost, not a whodunit, but it's a chase for the whodunit person uh, yeah, in just a short span of time. In the midst, yeah, the, the, yes, the Stash one about the, being followed by the... Um, my this, God, the one where you're stuck inside the house, I'm like, what are you saying? Why would you, why would Ruskin, is it true Ruskin born the story firstly? Well, I, I of course expanded it. It, it again. It so many things of my stories grow out of things that happened to me or that I see around me, and uh, something like that did happen. But I sort of. But there was a guy who killed his benefactor. I let and, it and, uh, go on. Hmm? There um, was this gentleman who killed his benefactor and then went after you uh, when he that when he when, true when you about recognized. We followed down to the Pathan Court railway station and this character trying to get into the compartment hmm, while the train was moving. <laughs> uh, something like that did happen. Just probably why it's quite vivid when I write it in the story. Yeah, hmm. I just kept so I had wondering. A, I had a few hmm. minor adventures in my younger days. <laughs> but um, fortunately survived them. But the way that I, the tale is told, it's more like, you know, wrong place, wrong time, if you like. <laughs> Nothing else. Yeah. It's not uh, anything on your part. Again, read the book to find out more. Just a lot of variety for people listening in the book. The whole style uh, for the modern generation, I think, I, I don't know whether you would have done that knowingly, but I suppose not. It's for the modern generation with a short attention span of people like me and much younger than me. I think this is fantastic because you don't have to be paying attention sometimes. You can go from one to the other. You know, yes. it just weaves its way. True, I'm that sort of reader too. I'm don't I can't read very fat long novels now. I need either short stories or um okay or detective stories, crime fiction, biographies. It's something that I, I can get through quickly. Hmm? So I, I suppose as we get older too, we maybe uh, lose patience a bit uh, with uh, very long literary works uh, and uh, attention but span does get this. Hmm? If, if I could again risk praising you uh, too much here and uh, offending you in reverse ways. Um, but the thing is that they're short, but they're, hmm. 
it's like a bountiful story it's not like you you know cropped a story and given it to us the suhan mm-hmm. story i don't notice how long a short it is it's only in hindsight i i said all this happened and it's only been a few minutes it's just like that yes, but there's not, there's nothing very long i think they can all be 15 minutes would probably be the 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 time limit actually it goes back to the when i was in my 20s and 30s i used to send um, short stories to the bbc in london they used to have a short story slot 15 minute slot so it had to fit into a 15 minute slot so i got into the habit of doing stories roughly 2000 2500 words for that slot <laughs> so it uh, it became a habit after that so sometimes unwittingly i'm writing to a certain length limit or or, or to a certain discipline which goes back dozens of years Mm. must break out of it shouldn't get <laughs> no don't break out of it i think it's fantastic yeah uh, not to put anyone down but sometimes people take so long to get to the point you know mm. it's like in those corporate meetings where somebody asks a question which is longer than the answer you know you can just you might hear the magic flute playing in the background that's my father's phone and i i will not be able to disengage it but the music is mozart so if that helps uh, mm. i want to ask you about that also you so you got to see yehudi menuhin live uh, as in playing the violin in front of you i did I did. I was taken to St Paul's Cathedral by my publisher, that is um, Diane Atill, who was the uh, editor and publisher, uh, who took on my first book, and she took me to St Paul's Cathedral, and St. it Paul's. was about a wow, performance hmm, of of, uh, of very classical music, huh? and uh, I some but everybody who was there was you know lif- listened in hushed silence, and when it was over, the the Queen Mother, the Queen Mother, then the mother of the present queen who who also attended this recital came down the aisle and kept asking people on either side if they'd enjoyed the performance uh, and she asked me too and i said yes ma'am i did uh, that was uh, what else could one say <laughs> exactly <laughs> what kind of question is that at least was he notoriously bad tempered or something he would bang the violin on your head if you said anything else <laughs> okay, but i didn't know much about him uh, uh, but you know i was prejudiced against violins in a way because when i was at prep school in simla and bishop cottons when i was a very small boy uh, we had a headmaster uh, mr priestley who was very nasty to me and he would be playing the violin every evening and i used to sort of glare at him from the veranda and and wish that his violin would break down or something like that so i was and i don't think he played very well either so <laughs> but so it was a change maybe listening to a real violin player wow it's it's the book is you know so you go back to england then you come back here i mean it's there's a lot happening it's not just the hills it's it's a lot about the hills obviously because that is the yes, book but these are uh, all really recent stories they're not old stories they're not very early ones they've done all mostly written during this uh, two or three years of covid epidemic I've written at home when one didn't go out and i've written other things too but uh, that, uh, they seem to as you say be a variety and have put them all together like a christmas stocking <laughs> no I, i don't know whether again I'm, i don't know whether it's the conscious or subconscious at work but i just like the way it goes everywhere because there's so much variety you never get stuck in any sort of you know geographical location for long uh, people they change so it's it's almost like episode after episode i don't know in the modern context would be the right phrase to use but it's just it's it's actually a very fast read and i'm proof of that so i'm well, i'm a I'm brand a ambassador fast, ruskin dot i'm a fast writer too maybe that's why i sit down i want to finish the story and usually it's done in two or three sittings at the most you know any story at a, a day or two that's why i like short stories but if i set out on a novel by the time i'm halfway through i'm probably sick of it you know so <laughs> i prefer the, uh, the the shorter genre <laughs> Uh, Raskin, now that you mentioned your writing process and style, that'll be very uh, interesting to ask. So, do you use an? Do you use the laptop? Do you use an old typewriter from back in the day? Do you write with a pen? Yes, I write by hand. It's it's. I enjoy it because I I used to type, but that was started getting a sort of a stiff neck, spondylitis. So I find it more comfortable writing by hand. Also, it's in a way more personal. I feel I'm in direct contact with my characters in a way, and um, there's something sensual about it almost. And I like, <laughs> I like paper. Yeah. I like a pen, but I don't use fountain pens because I get ink all over my hands. So I use a ballpoint. I use a ballpoint. You use. You, you have a conversation with me. Publishers are, are very 
tolerant. They they don't insist on my sending in a typed hmm, uh, print. Out You're Ruskin or, Bond. They can hardly say, <laughs> go and clean it up. What are you saying? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ruskin Bond. Monsieur, you remind me, I met this a few years back, this lady in a in a club in a club bar in Dehradun, and I was inter- she said, "Yes, I know who you are. You're that you're that writer fellow, Bunskin Rond." <laughs> <laughs> and after that, friends who were with me, they were calling me Bun all the time for some time. Oh, long ago. <laughs> if, if we had a closer friendship, I would too. It's hilarious, Bunskin <laughs> Rond. Yeah, you know. So uh, you're in August Company, uh, as high as you are on the, in, in the pantheon of writers, as low as I am. I also write by hand. I can't bear yeah, to type. It takes too long. And yeah. So uh, people don't understand, but but your thoughts flow. I, I suppose the way you you began is difficult to make that change and you know uh, yes. go the same pace as your mind with an instrument, etc. Also, so, I've, been, I've read the story in my head beforehand, so it's only a matter of actually putting it down in decent words and language and making it. Uh, so do you readable. do you make corrections or are you a Mozart like writer? I mean, just goes to? hardly any. I I I might just cross out a word here and there or go back. I might just occasionally in my hurry I might make a spelling mistake. So. I, Correct that, but otherwise oh. I, I don't. I'm too lazy to edit. <laughs> Although in the present woke culture and uh, mm. uh, the times we live in, sometimes you may have to rewrite words out of force. <laughs> yeah, <That's laughs> true. true. Think twice sometimes huh, about what you write. Yeah. Um, it wasn't always like that, but there you are. Mm. Wow. <laughs> Okay, we won't put Ruskin Bond on the spot and all that. Uh, I'm sure that that's the story for another day, another time. Um, there's, there, there's, there's a. Fr- I think we'll be running out of time, but I would have loved to talk about Frank Brain character. Uh, I just want to know if that's a true story. Uh, it appears to uh, you mentioned uh, your mom, etc. Well, it is true. Yes. Um, Although it happened long, course, a long time ago. I, I only write end. about I write about real people I've known only after many years have passed because I don't want to hurt the feelings Correct. of anyone who actually was close to them or knew them. So this, of course, this incident goes back to my childhood when I was very small. Hmm? So and uh, Frank, if Mr. Brain of the story oh, I must have passed away about fifty years ago. <laughs> so anyway, I, I've, I've never now never never been sued or threatened with uh, uh, threatened with any legal action for libel or ob- anything like that. Although I write a lot about real people, and sometimes people don't recognize themselves, you know. They don't. Um, yeah, because they don't think of themselves as that. Yeah. And that's not me. It can't be me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, I don't think you're very unkind to him, because at the uh, end you quoted a poem, I think, or a, a rhyme, yeah. where you say yeah. he cared for nobody and nobody cared for him, sort of words oh, to that effect, and which I thought yeah. was absolutely spot on. And then you think of so many people, hopefully not oneself, but so many people who are like that, you know, and... Yeah. Uh, Live that yeah, life so of flamboyance, mm. yeah. But but then uh, the end was, you know, and ironically, then nobody left nothing like that. You. Yeah. Mm. And then, uh, please read the book uh, to find out more. I'm not I'm revealing glad, each I, and everything. I'm so glad you've read all those stories. So, sometimes people interview me or talk to me about my books without having read them. <laughs> At least you. No, I. You <laughs> know, you I, I didn't realize how your writing style suits me because I haven't read you since school. But. Oh. Um, yeah, but it really suits me. And when I say suits me, I'm sure it suits my, a lot of people. My style hasn't changed much either. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it just, it's quick, you know, and I just enjoy that. There's no beating around the bush and you're going to so many places, you're always interested. I mean, Frank mm-hmm. Brain is in the middle of, you know, uh, uh, very different experiences and he's yes. just a totally different tale from the others. Mm-hmm. And yes. uh, I, I don't think also there's a judgmental call at any point. You've just told it like it is. And that really sad, uh, well, not sad, it is what it is at the end, which sums up his life and his life's philosophy, right. if you like. Uh, uh, but we have to take a break. Before that, I'll just quickly mention, uh, I wish I would like you to, after the break, at least get uh, the suitcase, the old suitcase. I, I, again, I totally, am, am, my empathy level with that, I can't tell you. And I'm sure a lot of people reading will have huge empathy levels with something similar in their lives as that symbolizes a lot of things, I suppose. And you'll tell us that after the break as well. Share Singh, I don't think we'll have time for the chocolates, Kiran, Doppelganger. I want to ask if that's a true story if we have time as well. So much Which to one? talk about. Yeah. Okay. Yes, Russ can say. Which one did you say you'd ask me if it was uh, true? Uh, oh, the doppelganger story because uh, oh, that one. I, well, I, I made that <laughs> again. That was slightly that was made up, right? Yes, yes. The, the characters are real, but um, 
I, but the rest you didn't actually I, see. I don't yes, want to give it away. I don't want to give it away. But you didn't actually see her. When, and then the guy says that you know such a such thing happened at a shoot uh, a month back. And, and yes, you, that, that that part is true. The shoot in in um, up in uh, Darjeeling, uh, such a detour, and. Um, and this lady was his biographer, no? Um, right. So, Maria set off. It's the yeah. the second part of the story, which I, I, okay. I which okay. that turned into a sort of little ghost story. <laughs> yeah. Wow. This I just want like I, I can't even put if if I and I've just read it it's fresh in my mind I can't even describe the book as one genre you know it's it's got its own it's like it's a Ruskin Bond you it's know quite a mix, sorry now that you yeah, because so many different things happening we will take a break a great yeah. privilege to have Ruskin Bond on our show we've had awful guests uh, for the last five years but this raises <laughs> the bar it's going to be very hard for the next guest who follows him I can tell you that Ruskin Bond the legend with us the name of the book let me just pick it up and show everybody Song of the Forest there it is oh, there it is. That nicely brought there you out. Go. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, mm. if we had Malaika, it would uh, have more oomph appeal, but it's just me. And uh, we're taking a quick break. When we come back, Abbas will join us. He has never read a book in his life, Ruskin Bond. This is a generation of Indian <laughs> minds that are developed only on the internet. So I apologize. It'll be very difficult. You'll have to talk to him like he's an infant, and we'll have to explain the alphabet from A to Z. <laughs> uh, but Ruskin Bond is still with us. We're taking a break, and we'll be back after this. All right, uh, we're back from the break and we're joined by a beautiful figure, uh, the, I mean Ruskin Bond, and also <laughs> a less glamorous personality, out-of-work comedian, actor, aspiring singer, politician, and right-wing hater, <laughs> wokeist, Abbas. Abbas. Thank you so much, we, yes. Have you read Ruskin Bond? I have from read this generation, lots you of have. Ruskin Bond, yes, I have. Oh, very yes. good. Very good. Well, I'm in my uh, 30s, so I'm still uh, not. Uh, that's exactly true. You're an young, old man, young. so you qualify. <laughs> yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm sure they're still teaching. My daughter knows. That's why she came up uh, because she knows it's Ruskin Bond, or she's not talking to me for the reasons I can't explain right now. And she, she, she said, uh, so she came out only because it's Ruskin Bond. She's willing to do this. So he's still mm-hmm. reaching out to all the generations Absolutely. that continues. Yes. Yeah, yes, but is it helping this country? They're not listening to him. <laughs> that, yeah, we can use a bit more of that. <laughs> yeah, we could. Um, uh, so, uh, can I, uh, Abbas? Can I squeeze in a couple of stories? I want to very sure. quickly give yes. you the AMAs because we'll do I, that. I, can't go I have a little story that I want to share with Mr. Okay. Bond, and then we do, can... you, do yours first. Do okay, your story so first. I actually uh, heard uh, Mr. Bond speaking. Yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. I actually attended a session uh, by Mr. Bond in 2011 at the Jeff. You call him Mr. Bond. He sounds like MI5. <laughs> <laughs> <That's probably good. laughs> Um, and I remember that you were, it was an early morning session around 9 a.m., which is early for me, not for Cyrus. Oh, yeah. But, <laughs> and I remember early for, yeah. early for most people, yes. And uh, it was a storytelling session. It was in, in a wonderful cold Jaipur. Everybody was in, sitting in the lawn. Oh, okay, right. mm-hmm. And you had narrated a story uh, of getting trapped. Uh, with your sister, I believe, while a tiger was outside your house. And you wow. had about 200 to 250 people enraptured. And then you <laughs> finished the story and very casually you said, I just made all of that up off the top of I my did, head. Yes, yes, so, yes. Uh, how, much, how much of your stories, I mean, I personally believe storytellers are... It's like Sohan. If you're paying attention, Abbas, the Sohan story, uh, he yeah. really had me because I absolutely believed it. When you read that, you got to read it. I, I, can't, I can't tell you this. You read that story. I told by calling myself a fiction writer. But because basically I'm a big liar. <laughs> <laughs> well, so there's yes, that story I told in Jaipur. I made it up about this tiger. It was, took place in a forest rest house. Right, and I was correct. alone there. And then I was reading a book in the veranda when I saw this tiger sort of circling the rest house and kept coming closer. And then I locked myself. Actually, it's not pure fiction because it's a dream. This is a recurring dream that I've had off and on throughout my life. There are two versions of it. One is that being trapped by this tiger in a guest house. Another was staying in a five-star hotel in Bombay and realizing I didn't have the money to pay the bill. <laughs> and the days kept passing. Tiger the is bill. the better story. <laughs> and I didn't know what I did. It was worse than the tiger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, much worse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oof. Uh, so but I, but the, so some of my dreams become stories. I do. I keep a dream book. I put down interesting dreams now and then. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and sometimes they they uh, they turn into stories. Uh, and but could it could there be a higher compliment, Ruskin, than actually people realizing that they've been had in a sense because the yeah. stories and the, the style of writing for this particular one for sure um, mm. is you know it, it appears that these are co- coming from your heart and coming from your from your life yeah. and partly they yeah. are so that's the other problem partly they are mm. and the description the descriptive around it is uh, is all, always real yeah. so uh, it's fantastic. Some, some of my stories are actually quite factual and true like Mr. Brain like um, the the um, suitcase the faith healer you know those stories but sometimes I I start with an incident or something that's actually happened and I, my imagination runs away with me mm. uh, and, and a certain mischief a certain, a certain mischief is there in the author as well <laughs> Huh? Yeah. As as the Jaipur folk found out that day, um, yeah. I want to. I, 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 I want to share uh, uh, this picture, which uh, I actually got the novel Delhi is not far signed by Mr. Bond, and uh, it is yeah. it is it is one of my most precious uh, uh, wow. like uh, oh. books that I hold to my heart. Thank you so much, oh, you devil you. Abbas. <laughs> you waited, didn't reveal this to make sure that uh, you come out looking uh, like the chumcha of Ruskin Bond, and I come out looking like a fraud. Huh? <laughs> I'm the I'm that. Doctor, you know the, you know the, you know his stories yeah. like the back of your hand so i think we both come across as uh, die hard no, no 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 but that that's fabulous that you kept it and you remembered and you brought it yeah. here as well yeah. but i wanted to just quickly ask raskin because a huge empathy i felt there's a section towards the end where he talks about uh, 2 am being the death hour so, and, and you talk about prostate problems so 12 2 and 4 is when you <laughs> pee i do exactly the same thing so I was like, "What? How does he know me so well?" But uh, <laughs> leaving that aside, the prostate uh, for another day. Talking about the two AM, why exactly is it the death hour? I mean, you sort of explained it, but if you could again, what's that? The uh, the ex- so you divided your, you said twelve o'clock midnight. Uh, oh. There are people are still around. Four AM. Some yeah. people are waking up and doing things, but two AM is that lonely hour. It's like it the death hour, the dark hour. I, I always wake up at two AM. In fact, I wake up two or three times in the night. And recently, I, I've been getting up at about one or two, feeling terribly hungry. Um, and I don't want to disturb in the, anyone in the house. So last night, I, I slipped out of bed. I crept into the dining room, put on one of the lights. The fridge was empty. I found a bun on the table. So I c- sliced this bun in half. I buttered it well. And I found some sweet mango chutney, which I put on it and closed it together and, and ate it. And it, was, it created a wonderful... Um, mango chutney bun, um, which was delicious. Then I came back to bed and slept beautifully. I dreamt of I dreamt of um, kids bathing in mango juice and teachers sucking lollipops and tigers tigers eating strawberries and cream. You know, not not eating up poor cocker and barking beer. <laughs> so, is is then, this politically motivated in any way? Even the tigers have to give up meat. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> oh. Wow! Yeah, but um, so, a lot of things happen in the middle of the night. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> now, see, I don't know if you're t- uh, having us on after the uh, tiger story from yeah, Jaipur. Exactly. I'm a little worried. The right, Abbas? Did you feel that he's now going to spin a story really and then it. suck us in and then laugh at us uh, <laughs> for the next twenty minutes? Yeah. Oh yeah, and that 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 um, uh, that actually happened. I heard this knocking on the front door, uh, and I and I I got up and I saw this ten foot figure of a woman in black. Probably is part of the dream, or I imagine. <laughs> and um, I bolted the door. I wouldn't, wasn't going to let her in. And then I went around to to, to my bedroom, and there she was at the window. <laughs> but that wasn't really happened. What's it? I that really it happened? A, no, 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 I'm confused. No, 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 no. no. I, I've not heard any medication people to it's do. It's open interpretation. You so did it happen or not? You want to believe? <laughs> Huh? I thought it was an omen, you know, of something bad that was going to happen, but nothing like, happened. Like marriage. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh, um, Oscar Wilde say marriage is a romance in which the hero dies in the first chapter. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so right. Um, uh, we won't have too much time, but can we squeeze one of us? I just want this one story. Sure, fascinating. Yes. Now, yes. I want to know if, if, if this is uh, fiction, then I'm screwed totally. Uh, but you speak of that old suitcase that you buy as a young lad when you're in, in uh, England. Yes, yes. That's, a, I, I, yes that's, that's a bit of autobiography. Yeah. That's pure, pure, pure autobiography. Uh, didn't exaggerate anything there. It's just a simple story of how that suitcase survived over the years. Uh, really falling to pieces in the end. <laughs> <It did. laughs> 
But, but, uh, but you you bought a second one. Of yes. the same trip, you bought a second one which didn't last at all. Uh, that's true. And uh, strangely, the one the last the one that lasted was the cheaper one. It was practically exactly. a cardboard suitcase. Hmm? <laughs> so the lesson to be learned, Abbas, is those who are cheap last longer. Remember yes, that. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that's one for my tribe. Yeah. All right. So the, quickly to talk about the book before we do AMAs, uh, "Song hmm. of the Forest," the one and only uh, Ruskin Bond is back at it. He never stops. Actually, the most prolific writer that we can think of, definitely from our shores. Um, and like I said, it's a fantastic read. And I thought I want the next generation to take a look, try try the hand of reading again. This is the book that will get them back into it, honestly, because this is just it's just it's got all kinds of things happening. It keeps changing. It's topsy turvy, sort of. You know, you're on a roller coaster ride of sorts, and it's always fun. So that's that for the book. Follow me at Instagram and Twitter on Board Brocha. I'm so bored. I need your help. I need your love. I need your touch. Okay, just 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 follow me. Uh, yep. Now we turn our eyes and ears to the nation, or rather, the eight <laughs> people who are on the podcast. And Abbas, go ahead. Well, we got uh, a bunch of questions, and generally, just uh, people writing in to thank you, Mr. Ruskin Bond, for all the stories you've uh, you've given us. Uh, this one particular email comes from Jaya, who writes from Vancouver. She says, "Hello, I am so excited to be writing in a question for Mr. Bond himself. One of my popular dinner stories for people is when I, as a gawky teen, along with a bunch of kids, met Ruskin Bond at an old hotel in Mussoorie." It may have been the Savoy and Ruskin mm. entertained us with some pretty compelling ghost stories about someone who died in one of the rooms. Um, <laughs> she's mm. asking a question. She says, uh, she asks rather, mm. did you have the proverbial crossroads in life that possibly determined the path of writing for you? Did, were there certain crossroads in my life? Hmm? Mm -hmm. Um no, I wanted to write from the time I was at school, just as uh, Cyrus said earlier, you know, um, I was an uh, ambitious uh, writer as a boy at a time when writing wasn't fashionable. Hmm? Because back in 1950, you didn't become a celebrity um, by, as a writer. You, you weren't known by your face or, or, or because there was no television, there was, uh, you know, the internet, none of the visual media that developed later. You were known by your name. You, you could... As it happened to me once, I sitting in a studio in 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 London in those years, chatting to a, another gentleman who was going to give a talk on the BBC. And after he got up and left, and my producer said, "Do you know who that was, Ruskin?" And I I said, "No." He said, "That was Graham Greene." So there I was talking wow. about the weather and chatting with. How did you know? <laughs> Total stranger, I didn't know who he was until the producer told me yeah, later. Yeah, yeah. And he was then at the height of his fame. He just written the script for the third man, and his books were all over the place. So mm -hmm. you you were anonymous in a way. So you weren't. So my ambition to be a writer wasn't the idea of becoming famous. You know, like a right. star or a cricketer or something. It was just that I wanted to be a good writer <laughs> and write books, um, and that was it. I think the only writer who really pursued fame and publicity in a big way was Hemingway because he would go out of his way to, you know, to crash a to plane or, things, yeah. <laughs> uh, or something. Yeah. Otherwise, most writers are sort of quite happy to stay at home. No, and, I uh, think in India, a few modern writers could be uh, uh, accused of such things, but we won't take names and go down that no. road. Well, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's because of the, maybe also, the fact that... You, you set a bar with Hemingway, so I don't think the writing skills are on the same <laughs> level, so leave, we'll leave it. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's the age of the celebrity now. So, you know, yeah, enough. Yeah. 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 All right. But, the next question comes from Harvey's. Uh, Harvey's has asked, Mr. Bond, how do you achieve a combination of simplicity of writing style and depth of subject matter? Oh, uh, I guess it just comes naturally, you know. Um, I have a simple style, but so many fine writers have had simple styles. If you read Somerset Maugham mm -hmm. or others like that, they have a very simple style, but it, it used tell a, a, a very deep story sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, and I want people to read me. You know, I don't want to confuse them. But you know, them. I would think that uh, you're entitled to some arrogance as a writer after so many years. But I, I never feel that while reading you, reading it fresh as I did just now a few hours back. And it's it's still the same. You managed to stay true to whatever style you had, for better or for worse, from the beginning. I don't. Would you say that's fair? Yeah, no, very fair. I, my style hasn't changed much. Um, themes come from different places, but I I often write in the first person, sort of you know, put myself into the story and. Uh, um, 
which is why sometimes people maybe accuse me of of making of exaggerating or making things up, which I do. <laughs> Trust their stories, uh, and um, if if I want to be, I keep a journal sometimes, and I try to be honest in that. I wrote an autobiography, Lone Fox Dancing, in which I I haven't told any lies, but like everybody else, you keep something back <laughs> mm-hmm. in a way. So I don't think um, anybody can come. The only true biography of a writer is usually written 50 years after he's gone, mm-hmm. if anyone remembers him. So um, uh, it's it's hard, very hard to be honest about yourself because sometimes we don't know ourselves mm-hmm. <laughs> very well. Sometimes true. I think I'm, Also, after the person is gone, I suppose the writer's prejudices for or against also come into it. It's not possible mm-hmm. to be that balanced. Right. Yes. That's so, true. You, you, um, and after all, a writer is, by his nature, an egoist. Hmm? Um, I think you have to be a bit of an egoist huh, to to be a writer and to you know want to put your your thoughts and ideas and mm-hmm. over on you know onto others. Um, so one should, has to keep that ego and control to a certain extent. Hmm? Right. This is for you, Abbas, because you're a writer, you're a comedian, <laughs> you write your own jokes, you know, I mean, whatever, it's still some form of writing, so your ego That's has to true. be in check. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> I, right. I, will, I will remember that. Uh, yes. We just have two more two more questions. This one comes from Karthik. Karthik says, uh, Mr. Bond, how do you look at the fact that your stories and books have traveled through so many generations? And does it, uh, does it ever worry you that certain stories that you wrote in the past don't hold up that well now? Well, uh, it's possible. Well, maybe they wow. didn't hold up well to begin with. That's <laughs> but not a fair question around. Uh, um, some stories are still around. Some of perhaps don't hold up too well. Why would it not hold up too well? That's just a, a setting of I, a time I and a place. I guess his answer is for, for someone who's been in writing for Depends that long. When they were written. I was, I, not much of that I've written is dated because right. there's nothing that I've written that has gone out of print. You know, now Correct. I've been writing yeah. for 70 years mm-hmm. and everything that I've written is available somewhere in a book in yes. a collection, and uh, it, it, some books do better than others, yes. I mean, some stories are popular or well-known. Others, you know, are, are not so well-known and uh, maybe trivial too. Mm-hmm. So, but they're still there. <laughs> right. uh, I think we should punish the person who sent that question and I think his toes <laughs> should be cut off. Uh, I don't understand the point of that question <laughs> because good writing is good writing. It's got no date or time to it. Yeah. And I ask myself these questions too sometimes. No, I, th- uh, I, I, I had a, I had a we question. We shall defend you. your honor. There's no way <laughs> we can allow that. Do you yeah. read um, uh, any contemporary fiction from newer writers? Uh, no, I books get that books sent to me. Yeah. I, actually, I get a lot of self-published books, two or three a week. Huh? Can't read all of those. Um, right. Of course, I read for pleasure, basically. So I'm reading old favorites or or. Mm-hmm. Or sometimes uh, I, I look or search for books that I might have missed earlier on. Mm-hmm. Um, I do, of course. Uh, I, I think it, Abbas wants to know, do you read Ashwin Sanghi, yeah. Chetan Bhagat? Uh, I want to know, can I send my was, manuscript? I did, I did a, a show with Chetan Bhagat once in, in Mumbai. Right. And we were both asked, what was the f- book that you, uh, that you remember the most, which had the greatest impression on you when you were a boy or a young. Oddly yeah. enough, he, he mentioned Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens and I had mentioned David Copperfield by, <laughs> by Charles Dickens. Right. So there was something in common there. Yeah. <laughs> um, right. you know, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. It's very wicked, Cyrus, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. All right. No, okay, the I, last uh, comment. Yeah. yeah, go ahead, Cyrus. Go, no, go, go on, go on. Let's get so squeeze last, in the comments. Uh, this yeah. comes from mm-hmm. Supratim. Supratim says, I have no questions, just gratitude. Thank you for helping me develop a mind that can think in more ways than one dimension. Uh, well, so just a little great. thank you note. Uh, if I can give someone a little happiness, a, a little joy, a comfort, or some fun, I mean, that's something something that makes me happy. Mm. But also, uh, Abbas, you have to understand that with Ruskin Bond, it's like real adulation. You see, with yeah. all of us in the line of work we do, it's all rubbish. But here, mm. it's real adulation tested by time, exactly the reverse of that silly question, the sort of, <laughs> we didn't answer in a bad-natured way, but you know what I'm saying. So I, I wonder what that feels like, because you know it's real adulation. And we all get emotional when we're thinking about you, and there's so much involved in that. There's streams of yeah, consciousness and beyond. And I take people sometimes back to their own childhood or the youth, after all having gone through three generations uh, of 
uh, of uh, readers. Um, I you sometimes get letters from abroad from, say, someone in, in, in America or England or someone who's feeling homesick for India. And they've gone to some length. My books are not always available there because mm. actually, basically, they are published here mostly. Mm. Uh, and uh, But they, they go to the trouble of getting one and because it brings takes them back uh, to India, to their growing up years, to the places they've lived in, in the hometown, you know, things they've missed. Hmm? Uh, be- because there is an element of nostalgia there, I think, and uh, right. hmm? longing for the past, longing for the good things in the past, you know, the things that... Uh, uh, you remember uh, with affection. Also, mm-hmm. let's not forget that the connect with the author is so intimate, even though you never meet him. Or, yeah. or I mean, this, I can't believe yeah. this has happened, for example. But wherever the hell you are, some hamlet in middle India or wherever you are, some other generation, mm-hmm. you know, probably doesn't even speak good English, but, you know, just fascinated by the by, by the mm-hmm. tale and, and it gets into you. And, you know, the, the author's philosophy and mind is sort of part of you. Well, it's almost. Yeah, I put a lot of myself into it. In fact, all of myself in a way. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think that's perhaps what, makes it a little different. Yeah. So, so I'm, Abbas, I'm not, there are I'm some not good Indians in India. Uh, Remember right. that. <laughs> I never doubted that for a second. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ruskin Bond, it's been a real pleasure talking to you. We have to wrap it up here again. The book is Thank called... Thank you, Abbas. Thank the book so is much. called Song Thank of the Forest. Thanks for nice things about that book. I think uh, my publisher is going to be very happy. I have <laughs> tried to be careful not to overpraise you because and sound like one of those flatterers. So just because that would just upset and offend you. I know you're a man, man of class. Uh, but, but but one request, if it's possible, uh, can you say my name is Bond, Ruskin Bond, <laughs> like uh, like you know Sean Connery, or that would be great. Connery, not a good actor. Uh, he's, he's got that that lish <laughs> and that uh, Scottish uh, burr. Or whoever, whichever one, Roger Moore. James Bond, Ruskin Bond. There you go. Wow. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) That's the new Bond. We've got the new Bond. Abbas, breaking news exclusive here on our podcast. We have it. We have the next guy. Listen, (laughs) a lot of respect. We bow to you, sir. What a legend. What an awesome, awesome human being. And really great to hear from you. And we will push this book in our little way as much as we can. Go out and buy it, people. All right. Thank you so much. (laughs) Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, catch us on any of the podcasting apps, please. We beg you, we need you. Send us your questions on Twitter, on Cyrus Says In. Or you can email us, even if you're not female, on whatcyrussays at gmail.com. 